Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. This video needs extra precaution. It's very high risk. I don't recommend these picks for the casual gambler. Right? You need to be mentally prepared to lose on every part of the play. Just briefly here in my corner of the internet we take chances. We challenge the casino. We challenge conventional wisdom. Some picks are riskier than others. The picks I'm about to mention are very high risk and they're just based quite frankly on my take on where the fighters are and the event. So proceed with caution if you're looking for a sure thing, these are not the picks for you. There is a distinct possibility that I'm going to have to come online here after these matches take place with egg all over my face. It won't be the first time. Let's jump into the deep end of the pool. First, actual odds being offered on the Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. fight versus Brian Vera. I consider this fight to be a close fight, especially since Chavez Jr., in my opinion, is out of shape. I have a lengthy pre-fight video, but just understand, Brian Vera right now is a plus 750. That means the casino is telling you if these guys fought 8.5 times, Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. would win 7.5 of the 8 times. The play I'm recommending because I believe Chavez Jr. is out of shape and not ready. Right? The bet I'm recommending is Brian Vera at plus 750. Just based on the odds. Right? This is just a betting play. It's not a normal recommendation. I like Brian Vera plus 750 hedged with the under 8.5 rounds at minus 120. Right? It's a dangerous fight to bet on. I wouldn't be swimming in this part of the pool if the odds weren't so lopsided. I expect Chavez Jr. to be unable to do much the first two rounds of this fight. That leaves him eight rounds to do something. The one advantage he has on Vera is size. I believe he's going to have to go for broke and try to get a knockout. Either Vera can hold him off or he can't. Right? If Brian Vera banks the first two rounds, as I suspect he will, and if Chavez Jr. is out of shape and has a problem, right, then you need to realize that Brian Vera actually is viable in the fight. So I like Vera at plus 750. You're protected as long as either guy gets a knockout before the midway point of the ninth round. Just understand, though, that's an extremely risky pick. Let's get to Adonis Stevenson against Tavares Cloud. These two guys are two of the hardest punchers in the sport. But they're cracks. Stevenson has been knocked out before. Stevenson also gets hit in fights. Right? Stevenson's a southpaw. Tavares Cloud has a problem with southpaws. Right? He looked bad. In fact, he lost his fight against Gabriel Campillo. But understand, Campillo is 6'2 and a half and a lot slicker and a lot harder to find in the ring than Adonis Stevenson. The fight is in Canada. Both of these guys are going to feed off the crowd. Few guys hit harder in the sport than Stevenson with his left hand. Right? Stevenson also is a disciple of Emmanuel Stewart. So he uses a side profile and length. Both guys are fast starters. Tavares Cloud famously knocked down Kim Pillow in the first round of their fight. Stevenson famously knocked out Chad Dawson in the first round of their fight. Here's the play I like. Let's take all the leverage the casino is giving us. You're getting a plus 230. On Tavares Cloud to win the fight. I like the plus 230 on Cloud to win the fight hedged with the under minus 145. 
right? The problem with punchers is that when they get hit and hurt, they don't know what to do. What I want you to do is look at the end of the fifth round of a Stevenson dominant performance against Don George, right? Stevenson cracks him a few times to the body with left hands, right? George gets knocked down, can't take the body punches. Stevenson then steps in to end the fight. And Don George, who at this point is gasping for air, right? The guy can barely breathe. Don George turns around and pins Stevenson on the ropes. And in my opinion, Stevenson didn't know what to do. Now it goes unnoticed, the round ends. But my point to you is if Tavares Cloud gets Stevenson in that position, Cloud might well end the show. This fight is a competitive fight. Cloud, who's really more of a mid-range hooker, throws punches in combinations and has an excellent lead left hook that he can get off, right? If he lands on Stevenson, I don't believe Stevenson has the defensive skills to keep him off, right? Understand, with the under seven and a half, you're protected by the hedge if either guy wins the fight within the first seven and a half rounds. In other words, seven full rounds and you get half of the eighth. Because both of these guys are fast starters, because Stevenson doesn't move as well as Bernard Hopkins, who kept Cloud following him around the ring in the last fight, because both of these guys like to trade, and because Stevenson has been knocked out cold, I believe that either guy could win this fight by KO. I'm playing this really more as a distance play than by picking a side. But in a competitive fight like this, when you're giving me plus 230 on cloud to win, I'm going to take that leverage in addition to the under 7.5. By the way, on the under part of the play, that's a minus 145. The spread between the plus 230 and the minus 145 gives you a profit-making opportunity. Okay, as I said... These bets are not for the timid. You need to be prepared, especially when you're taking plus 750 underdogs like Brian Vera. You need to be prepared to lose bets like that. But just understand, if you win, it's going to be sweeter than most. Because, of course, with Vera, every dollar you bet, you would get back $7.50 should he pull the upset. And let me just point out, if Chavez Jr. is as out of shape as I suspect he might be and as rusty as I suspect he might be, let's say he quits in the corner before the midway point of the ninth round. Keep in mind, that's a high over-under in a 10-round fight. Let's say he quits or is overpowered. Take a look at these in Zurich, Brian Vera ending. Right? If he quits, is embarrassed, is overpowered, is getting booed by the crowd in Staples, and understand... You know, the Staples crowd is going to hold Chavez Jr. to a very high standard, right? Because that's a hardcore boxing crowd, and they know the family lineage. They know the expectation, right? Should Chavez Jr. throw in the towel or get knocked out by Vera, as others have, then you're collecting on both sides of that play. Good luck. It's high risk. Thanks for stopping by.